your favorite toy truck nerds are back. Welcome to That Scale RC Show. Everybody, welcome back to that Scale RC show. We are on episode 115, and this week we have a special guest, Andre Campos from Scale Metal Supply. How's it going? It's going. Good. Excited to be back on the show. <laughs> yeah, excited to first, have you. You guys were the first podcast I was on after I made this a thing. All right. We don't have repeats again. a lot either, which is bizarre actually but well so much has changed since you were on the first time i was like you know it's probably time to have him back on because you've been it's a pre travis days yeah i guess it was huh yeah and that means that was a long ass time ago <laughs> it was a long ass time ago we call over we call four years the, now the good old days those were the good old days <laughs> Of choppy audio and things cutting out and, and our horrible editing. It had a much more organic feel back then. No, it had a much more ghetto feel back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's what I meant. They both, they both had G's in them. I forgot which one. <laughs> Nostalgic, ghetto, tomato, tomato. Yeah. So what's new? The base camp builders kit. Base camp builders kit. I didn't even go see if they had any special deals at Badlands. Oh yeah, it was at Badlands over the last week. It was cool. Which is something we're gonna need you to elaborate a little bit more on because I know Badlands is Axial's or Horizons newer event, um, giving the Midwest you know, not quite the East Coast yet, but the Midwest, um, an event to go to since historically it's always been on the West Coast. Yeah, it seemed like besides 11 Charlie guys, it was a lot of the center. <laughs> I didn't talk to too many people from the East Coast. Huh. Surprising. I figured they would have, you know, that always used to be something you'd see popping up in conversations on Facebook and everything as people going, how come you never have one over on the east coast yeah. and then they get something closer and nobody goes to it right <laughs> they get a pretty good turnout though from like all the midwest folks uh i mean it looked like a couple thousand people where they had like the awards thing which is like a big meadow mm -hmm. and there was a lot of people there <laughs> nice. i mean i don't know the exact number i know they said it was like twice as big as it was the year before but they might have been saying that i don't know you never know <laughs> and i didn't go last year but it's pretty huge. It's pretty cool that they can like have a, you can run like your full size stuff there too. There was a few uh, hobby shops, Canyon, Canyon crawler and like RV trailer. They're one of my dealers. They were out there. They had a couple of Suzuki Samurais built up and they would go do like some of the axial trails. And then they would take people and go cruise around in the park. Fun. That's cool. And then there's a big like moto track. And then there's like, I think a short course track there too for at least like uh, side-by-sides. I didn't go that way. John Martin, he went that way. He's like, dude, you got to go over there where they're making the burgers. I never see any like crowd photos or anything from that one. Like that used to be like the big thing with. There's, yeah, there should be a good one. They had their, they had this one guy, I think his name was TJ. He was like all only flying the drone when they were doing stuff. So hopefully you guys see a big cool photo as far as they didn't post that one yet they did that a couple nights where it's like you know wave at the thing wave yeah. at the drone <laughs> let's see well yeah why don't we jump into 
new. I'm gonna pull up a main here so I don't miss anything. So like you said, we got the base camp kit, which surprisingly it comes with like metal links and stuff like that. So it's like not exactly like a budget builder's kit. It's actually like, you know, does it come with a dig too? Does it come with a new dig uh, add-on? I felt like it did, but I, I, don't I don't know. I don't believe that the kit comes with a dig. It says uh, optional dig feature. On that's oh, what okay. I was going to say. I don't see them giving a dig in that. Um, the only, I mean, obviously the only thing that you build right now that's got a dig is the Pro. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they well, didn't no. just come out no, with no, a no. dig, right? No, no, no. It's not even a dig. No, no, no. I, I stand corrected. It's not even a dig. It's a... Um, it's the uh, overdrive. It's basically mm. like a two gear kind of thing. You just shift oh, it and it gives okay. you, it changes your, um, the, yeah, was the ratio. No, it's not a dig. I think uh, the last thing that came with a dig was uh, the 10 3. If you didn't use the two speed option, you can do a dig. Mm. It's one or the other. Or you could do both. You just need a, um different receiver i mean or a different yeah you need a like four channel yeah so optional dig 269 that's not bad at all then element has their new utron out which is a brand new sport edition rig that has ifs in its second generation so uh that's actually one that we've driven and it was awesome so the new ifs is really cool we got that new rig that came out um let's see what else is which there? i'm excited for because i never got the ifs um bulkhead from the last version and this new one looks so much better and i'm glad i waited uh so i'm probably going to snag that once it becomes available because That's good, I got another project up my sleeve. Nice. Finally found the files to my L5P Duramax. That'll be a cool build. So I had to, um, I had to twist the guy's arm a little bit because I guess he went in and modified somebody's existing file because it's no secret you can find the GMC version, but you cannot find the Chevy version anywhere. So somebody wow. redesigned, I don't know, he claims him and his buddy redesigned the whole entire thing, you know, to work, yada, 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 yada. So, but he ended up selling me the files. So, um, yeah, just made me swear up and down that I wasn't going to start like printing them and, you know, distributing them everywhere. And I was like, no, I said, the fact that I got a hold of you and reached out and begged you for these, I'm not giving it away. Yeah. I guess the Traxxas High Trail edition of everything they offer is new too. They have a High Trail Sport, and then what's what's funny is it's like ever since they pulled that crap, it's like nobody pays attention to what Traxxas does anymore. Yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> They have like the, a decked out version with all the hop ups. Is it like that anniversary truck that Axial did? That thing was a good price. They referenced some of those up. I, I almost put a bid on that. <clears throat> oh, that Chevy there. anniversary truck thing. Yeah, they had one and they were raffling them off during one of the awards nights. You know, they didn't raise money for uh, 11 Charlie. It's like, I don't, I don't know how much it went for. I think it went for less than five. It was like three something. It's, it's wow. Like, yeah. I don't want it. It's got the shocks. I love. I love those rock shooter wheels. Those are probably my favorite. Those are my favorite Proline wheels. I have one, two, three, four, five sets on cars right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their K10 body looks pretty good. The Tractus one. It's. I'm surprised that you haven't really had your eye on those, Adam. That one does look pretty good. Yeah, they did a nice job on them. The T word body. Yeah. 
What other kits are we missing here? Those bodies are so dang expensive. It's like 139 bucks. I really like that, you know, that Bronco body that we had for a long time. They're so expensive. <laughs> Relaxing. Like with all the yeah. parts and everything. Oh, the base camp does come with metal links. Okay. Well, I was gonna say it's a it's a kit. I think even the raw builders kit came with the metal links. Yeah, it does. I just I was looking at the RTR because I couldn't remember if it had metal links or not. And it looks like the base camp kit is straight axle too. It's not portal. Yes. Which is I nice. Think. Let me double check. I don't want to say. No, it's definitely straight axle. Interesting. So the RTRs are portals, and the straight axle is. I don't want to say it's better, but it's it's tougher. <laughs> They're harder to break. Kit's a decent price, two sixty nine. Man, the the pros four thirty. Okay. Oh, that one's 250. Vanquish has a builder's kit too now. What does that thing run? Well, is it like 399 or something for the for the Phoenix straight axle kit, right? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, they, they had like a builder's kit I saw not too long ago, but I'm having trouble finding it. Like it didn't come with a body or anything. It was just Super uh -huh. plain, like the axial and the element one. I haven't come across it yet. There are so many 24th and 18th scale things in here. My God. <laughs> There's so a lot of 24th many. scale stuff. Continues to they had, up. I think it was, what do they call it? A circus comp? They had uh, Tony CC. Um, he had like a trailer, I believe. I didn't go down and see it, but I think they had a trailer with a 24 scale course on it that they pulled out to somewhere on the event grounds, and they had a comp there, That's top on it. <clears throat> yeah, for the 24s, it's like hey, you can take this wherever you want. Why would you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess A-Main doesn't carry that kit. Hmm. Weird. I know I'm not which, imagining this. Which kit? Vanquish Builder's kit. Oh. Um, it might be, well, because I was going to say, it could be like Axial. Axial hasn't actually released that base camp kit. It's still pre-ordered. Is it? Yeah, that makes sense. I don't remember seeing any boxes. I saw pros. They were selling pros there. Because <clears throat> if you go um, to... It's not on Vanquish's website, so maybe it is something that's in the pipeline. I thought I... Hold on a second. Vehicle kits. See, they call theirs vehicle kits, and that's what's ridiculous. Yeah, even if it's RTR, it's a kit. Well, that's because the Fe the Phoenix. Well, that's because the Phoenix did not actually come as a kit. I don't know. Because the Phoenix, I thought you had to build it. Because if you actually look at their stuff, the you can get a Phoenix RTR, or you can get a Phoenix straight axle. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's just all it is. I thought all their stuff were kits, and maybe they just came out with ready to run. Which is interesting because what electronics do they have in those? Uh, it looks uh, like just the hobby wing stuff that they'd make, you know, like the, what was it, AX5 ESC? I think it was like, it's the same ESC like everybody uses, like Sen uses it and Element did at one time and Axial did. And it's, it's that black heat sink with like this thicker black strip through the middle. Like it's even been a dynamite ESC at one point too, like. I, oh, oh it's the same be, yeah. it's the same e same esc yeah it's 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 a, same a little jump pin one yep yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. 
they do have a radio for these that i haven't seen though like i don't know they do call the radio yeah they call it the ve1 and then they got a brushless motor which looks like uh, i'm not kidding that looks like this that looks like the axial you know the stock motor that came in like every rtr ever it's got the same little cutouts servo just looks like some sort of cheap plastic thing but you're right the radio i have not seen interesting but i mean i guess you gotta you gotta figure they probably didn't spend too much money on um on getting those electronics because you're only talking a hundred dollar difference between an rtr and the kit yeah Oh, that is a newer version of the ESC. That is the same ESC that I thought. It's different. Man, where did I see that builder's kit? That's crazy. Huh. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Was it the, was it the trucks of freedom? <laughs> was it that? Yeah, that's forward. Oh, it's discontinued. That's why. Geez, they only added it in, well, I guess it was a while ago, November of 2022, but... It's really no, it's not long. It's discontinued already. Crazy. I wonder if it's because it has the old trims and stuff. Nice straight axle builders get it, huh? So I guess it was really old and I just wasn't keeping up on things. Well, not really old, year old, year and a half. Boy, Fury Tech kind of came out swinging with all this 24 scale stuff. Oh, they had so much stuff. That guy's got a lot of energy. Yeah. He was showing me his titanium cage. Like, oh, it's, it's a lot of cage. I was on a rift, I think. He didn't show me the 24 stuff. <clears throat> they have like a kind of comp build looking thing called the Cayman Pro. 369.99 for a 24th scale. No, thanks. <laughs> but it's got like a carbon LCG chassis and stuff. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's got a brushless revolver motor. So, I mean, it does have some expensive stuff on it. Crazy. into questions anytime too looks like we got a couple good ones for andre yeah let's do that cool okay well i will just jump right in so uh i know that you've you've pre-read a bunch of these so um yes i did i tried to make it easy i'm expecting very <laughs> uh professional answers very precise. <laughs> don't uh, get your hopes up <laughs> no you've heard us so far <laughs> all right um scooter scott what's been your favorite build this year I know, I know he's uh, leaning with that question. <laughs> UMG. Uh, <laughs> well, that wasn't my favorite build, but it's definitely been the easiest. It was just, he was a good customer or, you know, however you want to say it, friend. I mean, I've known him for a little while now, but <clears throat> just the whole execution, getting the truck. I built that thing in a couple of days, pretty much. It wasn't, wasn't too long. 
it took longer to drop it off at powder coat and get it back but no kidding wow that was that was the easiest one my favorite build i don't know man things like definitely like the it. best color <laughs> it's it's i'm curious to see how he got it painted i haven't seen the body yet i know he sent the body off <clears throat> to somebody to get painted yeah i don't think i've seen anything yet either um uh, let me look through my text messages i don't know if he's actually sent me a picture of the body yet he's only sent me wheel and tire well tire not tire wheel combos like which one looks the best um yeah i gotta go uh, off the look all right further further analysis the car that is the favorite is not here anymore i built a short wheelbase um, scale rail in the in the mindset of a class 10 car that was probably my favorite one that i built this year because i built it and ran it found a little uh i want to say i don't want to call it a mountain bike park that's what it's called out here but it's just a bunch of you know man-made features but it was perfect for the scale rail that was probably my favorite build so far as it was fun to run and stuff but that one's already gone I built a bunch of these whoopacabras, so those were cool. But I don't know. I think I think that I think that class ten car was my favorite. I wanted to do one of those for a while. Nice. It was all paneled up, and I had the Element um, three point eight five grabbers on it. It just it looks good. It looks right, and it worked as I wanted. So that was probably my favorite build this year so far. That took a while to get it what I wanted to extract it from my head. <laughs> All right. Um, Reckless Moat Control asks, uh, when you started making parts for other people, was it more the mindset of, quote, I want and need this, quote, or someone else wants this slash needs these parts? Nope. Started making them for me. Well, many months before, probably six, eight months before um, scale model supplies was a thing. I was just building cages and cars and bumpers and all kinds of stuff for other people. The year before, it was almost a whole car a month, plus, you know, bumpers and sliders, bumpers and sliders, this and that. So, no, these were, I made these and designed all this stuff for me, and I still, I build the stuff that I want to build, um, and then I just make more of it and find ways to make it easier for everybody else to make. Nice. That's my main, my main goal is just, you know, sharing what I think is the most fun thing to do and just, you know, build something unique, build your own stuff. Oh, right. Okay. Um, I don't want to butcher your last name. I apologize, Peter, but Peter C says, do you guys have any experience with trucks with dually tires? Uh, if so, what do you think of them? Did they help the rig in both crawling or trailing? Oh, driving with dually tires? Yeah. No, I don't really have any experience. I've built some rigs to accommodate dually tires. The Proline carbines, fun fact, you can buy those duallys. And then you can use like your rock shooter or your better cooler aluminum wheel with that back part. So you don't have to. Oh, have. really? Yes. Oh. I discovered this. Oh, so I'm you building... can swap the face of it. Yeah. I'm building a trail mater for this dude in, I think he's in Ohio. Um, cool dude. He's been asking me for a long time to build something. I'm like, all right, you're going to be the first like huge build of the shop. And I've been working on it for probably four months. I've got like four winches set up on it. I made like a, I'm calling it the wrecker bed. It's a little bed and brace, like flat bed thingy that has the accommodations for three winches, a um, little boom and stuff on there. Uh, I'm at the point now where I've got the front end started. I got to do like the engine cage and I have to like make some sheet metal fenders like the trail mater ones because I want them to get scratched up and rusty. I don't want them to have a 3D printed fender because that won't be cool. But the main part of the cab, the very skin of the cab, you know, like the door frame, <laughs> the a pillar the the back window area so there's going to be very little 3d printed body on there but that that's what i was playing with the dualies with because i had to figure out the spacing with how far i was going to stick out the the mounts for the leaf springs and such so yes you can mix carbine wheels with their i don't remember what the other one is the rock shooter that's the one i have but there's another one it's like the five slot it's kind of like a maggie looking wheel the Proline did. They're, I think they're all the aluminum stuff discontinued, except for the big SCX six stuff. Really? I think you can find them. Yeah, because I was looking for more yeah. uh, rock shooters. Um, there was a local guy to me in California who had just moved at the same time I did, and he was blowing them out. And I was like, "Give me them all. I want all the sets." And I bought like three sets, and then three sets of Trexus, Trexus tires. Those are good looking pre runner tires, I think. <clears throat> Mm 
Yeah, so Intrico, the, the pro line Intrico. I think it is Texas. But no experience crawling with a dually. No, sorry. Yeah, we we have a sim racing dually, and I haven't taken it on a trail or anything, so couldn't tell you. It just has been on asphalt a little bit and spent most of its time on a shelf. Those guys, those, those have a lot of uh, wheel speed. Those are good uh, drift. Yeah, yeah dually, fast. The send dually drifts pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Those are quick. Well, I can let you know how the dually thing goes after Axial Fest because supposedly Todd Norton's taking his Dodge he's building out on the trail, which I'll believe it when I see it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Nice. I sent him a Toyzuki motor mount. He said he was going to use it in that, but it looks like he's using something different. Well, so that's That's kind of funny. He brought that up to me too. Like he was like on the hunt for all this stuff because originally what he was trying to do was he was trying to get something that was like a low sprung, like a low, like placement uh, motor, just not for like performance, just because he wanted to clear his dash and his interior. And yeah, he, he tried, I think he tried that. He tried some other motor mount. He tried a couple different things and he said it just wasn't going to work with his uh, setup. So then he, then he got some bright idea to put it in the bed since he wasn't going to use a bed and he was just going to put like a tonneau cover over it. And then, so now everything's going in the rear of the truck. Oh, so that's the back of the truck. I had, that's, I didn't even notice. That's the back of the truck. I know it's kind of funky because all I think he did was I think he left everything alone and he just swapped axles is what I think he did. Whoa. I didn't even, I totally thought that was the front of the truck where he's got the big like Yeti wild boar two drive shaft going up to it. Yes. That's he's got uh, metal drive shafts on the bottom. And now, yes. Yes. So, yep. And then it was funny because he hit me up one day. We were just kind of like BS. And then he goes, he goes, dude, he goes, I got to figure out how the hell I'm going to get leaf springs to work with this. And I'm like, why? And he goes, well, because it's, a, I want it to be like scale, you know, and, and it has coils in the front and it's got leafs in the back. I said, no, it doesn't. And he goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, have you not looked at any of the newer Dodges? And he goes, what are you talking about? I was like the newer, or excuse me, Ram. Um, I said, they um, they have coils in the rear and he goes, are you serious? And I'm like, well, I don't know about the dualies, but I said the single wheel ones do. Yeah. I think the Raptor and the TRX both have coils too in the rear. Well, that would make sense. So that's more of a performance rig. It's just kind of like shocking to hear that a heavy duty truck is coming with coils. Yeah. In yeah. Instead it, of leaf it's strange that coils are kind of becoming a truck thing now. <laughs> Well, a truck more is like not even SUV a style suspension, you know, because like Forerunners and yeah. stuff like that are kind of the same type of setup. Yeah, but I mean, the, these modern trucks are like, I'm sorry, I'm a total truck guy, but they're starting to become less truck and more like car. I mean, like, yeah, the, like minivan, not to, with the coils. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I'm not trying to get like totally off topic, but like, if you look at some of the conversation, like the most common conversations I see in the Duramax pages uh, or uh, whatever on Facebook is I have my shocks are worn out. I'm looking to get something new. Can somebody recommend, you know, what's the best riding shock and this, that, and the other. And the other person's like, Oh, then this, this truck rides like crap. How can I get it to ride? So it's like, everybody like has the same thing. It's like, they want it to handle like a sports car. And you're like, it's a truck. I thought you're buying a truck to do truck things, not, turn it into a car like if you wanted a good riding car go get a car like yeah, truck's gonna ride stiff put a payload in the back it'll, it'll get a little smoother <laughs> yeah i almost said the other in one of this other guy was complaining that his uh that he's, his truck feels like it wanders and i'm sitting here going like well because look at it you built it to be a princess like there's nothing in it like <laughs> put something in the put something in the bed of it and the thing's gonna ride great yeah so I have a three quarter ton dually and it rides like shit. Well, what year is it? <laughs> no, I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, like three quarter and one ton rigs and they're complaining yeah. about how they ride. Well, I mean like prime example. So I just drove, um, Michelle's parents Tahoe back from Auburn. Cause we left her Jeep up there and that thing, I'm so used to how my truck handles that thing is like 
all over the place. And I'm like, cause Michelle's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I gotta get used to how this thing handles. I said, this thing's like soft and squishy and like all over the place. I said, I'm used to my truck where it's firm. I know that I, you know, like one little jerk of the steering wheel isn't going to send me into the next lane. Like this is, you know, it's like night and day difference. It's a car versus a truck. But anyways, I digress. Tigresser. Yeah, man. The first full-size truck I had was the F-250 you saw. And I've never driven something like that. And then I took the, the camper off and everything. I'm like, man, this thing is stiff. You know, just going to take the air out of the helper airbags and drop the PSI a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chris Trudeau asks, how do you pace yourself when it comes to building projects, especially when you're really excited for the end result and how much time is spent planning and researching before you dive in? Oh man, that's all over the place. Like, like I said, this mater build, this trail mater, if you're not familiar with trail mater um, and you're listening to this, go, go look at it. It's kind of cool. This guy puts this sweet old, I think it's like an eighties, might even be a seventies uh, Chevy all over the place in Moab rescuing everybody. But anyway, uh, that took a lot of research and stuff because I tried to make it, you know, as close as I could to like how we have the, how they have the metal work and stuff like that. So it really depends on the build. Um, a lot of the stuff that I make, I don't like to ever make the same thing twice. So that makes things a little bit easier, but I do go back and try to see like, did I do this? Like I've done two UMG, um, exo cages and I don't think that they're anything I like, but, uh, like stuff like that. Scooter Scott's was just, it was easy. With an exo cage, you just follow the body lines and you just kind of pick which lines you want. Um, that was literally came together in probably like three days, maybe total time. I don't know how many hours, not that many. Um, but like the, the last Wubacabra pre-runner thing I built, the one that they shared on the, the, the picture for today's thing, that took a little bit longer, but that was like also a few years in developing the chassis around how I knew I wanted to build the cars, how I had been cutting up chassis and building them before. So. It really depends on the build. It's hard to answer that one well. <laughs> um, I guess I could... Moon buggies would be the easiest one to answer that with, I guess. And that would probably be, you know, like maybe one or two weeks total time, like building. And then a couple of days just looking at pictures like, oh, what's a cool one I want to try to be like. Like if you look at the last two moon buggies I built, I built one for Axial Fest last year. That one's very Jesse Hines uh, fab inspired. And then the one I built this year... Um, it's a little bit more kind of like the uh, 805, Fab and 805 dudes. I was trying to do something more like that without making it look a lot like a rock lizard. But that idea, a lot of time spent on Instagram looking at the, the big boy accounts. Like for the trophy truck pre runner builds, I look at a lot of like Kibbe Tech and uh, Baja Shop and, you know, a lot of pre runner search like Class 2000 mm -hmm. or. Uh, or was it, I don't even know if it's 1450 anymore. I don't even know. It's, it's been a while. But, you know, search like Terra Crew, stuff like that. Find builders that is on Terra Crew, not necessarily like looking at Terra Crew stuff, but like find somebody on there. If you like how it looks, just start diving down the rabbit holes. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever done any kind of a Bill Brev like research stuff. You know, like yeah, really so. like planned it out and everything like it's I think I'm more just kind of a do it as I go. Yeah, that's how most of it is. This trail mater. That's why this one's so tough because yeah, <laughs> it's for somebody else. It's not for me. <laughs> I guess the Wilkie bug took a bit of research, but that was just like, where could I go to find the pictures I needed to make the copy of the cage? Same thing with with the Jason Shear Bronco. I actually reached out to him when I built that Bronco and I was like, Hey man, do you have any CAD photos of this? And like most people, he's like, yeah, sure. Just wanting to share their, their cool toy. <laughs> so once you, once you get all the angles, then you can start building. <laughs> all right. And then Kenny good asks any plans for weld it yourself cages. Uh, we have one for the JK hard body and the JLU um, axial. So we have that Jeep uh, cage. So you can do like a full one or a half one if you're using the Lexan body. Um, we've got the scale rail, eh, the scale rail kits. Um, those actually have templates and stuff for them. We've got a couple bed cages. One of them I think is called the Beaver Tail. It is called the Beaver Tail. 
Um, and then I'm working on a little like desert truck back half that I built on a base camp when I first moved out here, the first Airbnb we stayed at. Uh, I'm actually going backwards now and making that into a template for you to build. And then I will have one for the Wupacabra and I will have one for the rock buggy. It's just, I got to build them. That's, that's the thing with making the templates. I try to make stuff in an easier fashion than I build them. You know, like I like a lot of compound bins. So a lot of my pieces have two, three, four bins in them. And that's not easy for everybody. I know that it's not, it's not easy for me, but I just like how it looks. Um, so going back, kind of designing it with more straight pieces to make it easier to replicate and easier for people that haven't fabricated before. So yes, so yes, I'll make more. Not, none of that's pre-bent. Like you bend it yourself. Oh, did you say pre-bent? No. No, uh, no. I was no. just asking because I didn't know. I would love to get pre-bent, but I don't have thirty thousand dollars to buy a, a <laughs> three sixteenths uh, rod bender or a bunch of time to sit there and bend everything and then package it up. I mean, I've, I've done batches of cages for RCP crawlers. They do a lot of like the rock hobbies, Willie stuff. I made them, I think, forty cages. It's like twenty halves and twenty fulls. Uh, so I mean, I'm not. It's not beyond me. And I was doing um, parts for some other people before too, where they'd want you know, fifty of these, fifty of these, fifty of these, fifty of these. So I mean, it's not that. It's not out of my my wheelhouse of capabilities, but you know, I like to focus on making new stuff. <laughs> yeah, fair. All right. Um, then our last question here on Instagram from uh, Checker Pass Five Hundred Three, who is Chris Trudeau. He says, "Do you already have the next project figured out? And how many hours have you spent on the build so far? If so, <laughs> on the next project? No. Well, uh, actually, I guess there is a next project. There's another one that's been lingering in the shadows that I've been working on for a while. But I'm trying to make it like super easy." Like with a whoop of you can straight bolt on your 10 two parts or your element parts and have a long travel truck with longer shocks. You don't have to build a cage or anything. Um, and I'm trying to do that with another car platform just to make it like, oh, you can make this with it. You don't have to add the cage. We have the, the accommodations. If you want to build the cage, it'll make it super easy, but you don't have to. So, uh, man, that one's been a while too. That was probably been like four months, but that's like a whole new product too. So it's like a project and a product and I'm going to make, five of them i'm looking at my board yeah so it all depends man it all depends <laughs> on the project yeah. you're talking about i'm sure you you and and jay have the same like well there's this there's this there's this there's this and it's like they all have their different time slots that you've in, put into them and you know you get to a, a wall or a stopping point and it's like all right let's wander over to this one the scope and see is how, always, yeah, how we can far <laughs> yeah yeah, now that you say it, I start looking around and I see two like unfinished things. I mean, they're of the same origin. I mean, they're, they're bugs, basically, Volkswagen looking things. So there's like those have been there a while. But like the next build that I have in my head at the moment, uh, I have not started it yet. Um, I had some new, several new products. So there's the, the Wupacaba rails, which I just talked about. And then there's the rock buggy kit um, and then the buggy plates. So the buggy plates, I have one specific for the 10.3. And then I have another one that's elements tend to uh, VFD. So I need to build a buggy with the VFD so you can see how it fit. So that's like my next got to do it. Uh, I'm not going to plan it out too much. It's just going to be a moon buggy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got two of them right here I'm looking at. So, you know, I have some reference. Nice. Well, all right. Well, good deal. Well, that, is, is all that is all the questions. My goodness. Oh. Well, thank you everybody for chiming in on those. I, I didn't realize how long it's been since we've had a guest on here too. So <laughs> it's well, I, I think I was gonna say, I think you mentioned that one of the last times you like, you know, it's been almost, uh, so we're going on, to, we're in going on July. So that'll be the yeah. seventh month. I'm looking so this right will now. be the first guest since in 2023 that's for sure yeah it was over a year ago it was uh because it was scooter scott yeah, yeah i was gonna say that was may of last year yeah <laughs> we've been slacking time flies wow that does. but yeah um i was gonna say i always feel bad because andre comes out with like some of the nicest stuff like to help you like build your stuff and I take forever to get anything done just because I like have zero time. 
like we get it done right I'm, before you need it done right pretty much <laughs> right in the I, very I, end <laughs> i i scram i scramble to get it done like so for instance he just sent out not too long ago i mean it had to be about almost a month ago now um the 10 3 frame adapters for a bumper and i have a whole bumper in my head how i want it to be built but i just gotta sit down and weld it and then I have, I don't know how many sets of his leaf spring adapters for different axles. Cause I don't know which direction <laughs> I'm going every time I like, so, I, so, um, my buddy, uh, his son, Nick lap, he does a lot of like custom fabrication. Well, he did a lot of custom fabrication, um, in RC and he's got access to a lathe. So I gave him some old SSD 60 axles and he, uh, chopped off the tubes and he was going to custom mill some offset tubes to make it a, um, a front axle offset. And he's had those axles for a little over a year now. And he's like almost there. He's almost ready to, to braise the, um, the leaf mounts onto it, but it's just, you know, like everybody that just, finding time to sit there and do it because he's got like a full-time job now plus he's actually building his real truck so he's got like yeah he's got other stuff to take care of so i was like all right well then maybe i'll just use 10 two axles in the meantime but of course that's still like a slow drawn out build. Okay. but I, I, I got 10 I two straights it. and i got ar45 straight axle version. i, I think I, I have so a, do you <laughs> i was gonna say i think i got a pair of every single one of them <laughs> Because yeah, at one point I was prototype ones too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I at one point I was like, all right, I think I'm gonna go this axle. Nope, no, I think I'm gonna go this axle. I just can't make up my mind. I need to get the body mount is my biggest hurdle. Yeah, that's always and fun. Then, it's like I got to get the body set and then figure whatever well, everything out. <laughs> well, because doing a leaf spring build, you kind of have to work backwards. Cause like most people are like, Oh yeah, I'll just do whatever. Cause it doesn't matter. Cause I'll just adjust the links to make the wheelbase work. Well, with leaf springs, your leaf springs got to be mounted to the chassis and that's what's going to determine your wheelbase. So you need to get the body set perfectly. And then you go from there. Yeah. I always start at the front with the leaf stuff, especially the welded on stuff. I always start with the front because you have a little bit more room to fudge it around and it's easier to extend the back, especially on yep. like the axles where it's just straight. It's easier to chop up another chassis and weld up, you know, like a little fish plate. Well, actually, I have some of your um, frame extensions, too. Those are already on the chassis. I haven't cut those down yet because I haven't um, figured out where the body's sitting. So I don't want to cut off too much and then go, oh, crap. And you got all the goods. I haven't had, a, I haven't had any of those extenders in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I, I got a lot of stuff. Um, I just got to put it all together. So, but Did you I am fold determined. Up? I sent you the dimpled one, right? For the, for the leaf spring brace. Yes. I sent you one yes. that was dimpled. I think I hope. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I thought yes. those came out cooler. So I sent you that yep. one. <laughs> yep. Those are, that's going to go on the rig. Um, yeah, I'm determined now. Like my, I really want, like, and I always say that. And then something else comes out like the pro and then I end up getting like sidetracked. Um, I really want to get like my, my two scale replica builds done because those have been like two ideas that I've had for the longest time. Like I've always like, since I got into RC, I've always wanted to build a replica of my 94. And, you know, now that 3d printing is, you know, available and everything's a little more readily available via printing. Uh, I was able to get, you know, an actual, you know, I guess you could say carbon copy of my truck. Yeah, that is cool. And then, of course, now I found the Duramax, so I want to do both. So I have, like, something to tow the other one around. And then, yeah. You're going to have to get the, the RC four-wheel drive Hero front suspension, though, so you can get the torsion bars, right? Isn't isn't the 94 have torsions in the front? No. Isn't one of those trucks have torsions? Oh, never mind. <laughs> My Duramax does. My Duramax is IFS up front. The 94 has been cut out and it's a solid axle swap with the Dana 60 up front. Nice. So yeah, that one's been like dubbed more my like 
wheeler now. It used to be a daily driver back in the day. Now it's a uh, kind of like a lawn ornament. It just kind of like sits out front and doesn't go anywhere until I need it. Even when I wanted to go take it out wheeling, well, back in uh, February, I think when we hit the snow, I had all the plans in the world to take that out. And Michelle was like, I'm not getting stranded. She goes, we're taking my bike. I'm like, okay. Burn. She's like, yeah, she's just paranoid because, you know, 94 versus 2017 Jeep, something that's like got, you know, fully oh, equipped. Know. It's got, <laughs> so it's like, um, yeah. So, I mean, mind you, my 94 knock on wood has not left me stranded on the trail. It's only left me stranded once semi stranded once on the freeway. And I say semi because I could have made it home. I just chose not to drive in second gear the whole way home. No, I get you. This is the first time in a long time. I haven't had some sort of an eighties death machine as, as an <laughs> option to drive. You know, I had my 89 Hilux. I had an 88 Mazda 323 that me and my wife did rally cross in and stuff. And now I've got the 06 and the 05 and once, you know, like a RAV4. That thing's very reliable when I've got the, the F-250. So, yes, I, I remember. I miss I miss having cars that were fun to drive <laughs> or exciting to drive. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, well, I guess I can ask you gentlemen. Um, you can tell me if I'm crazy or not. Um, so I just got my ESC for the, uh, for the pro and I just can't make up my mind if I want to take the fan off of it or not. It's the, it's the, um, I almost said sidewinder. It's the Copperhead 10. Well, if you're going slow, I'd say take it off. <laughs> I was going to say that that rig's not going to be like hauling ass. It's a crawler. And it's really light, so I don't know if I really need it. And it just kind of like cleans up everything. I have copper heads and several things, and it's pretty annoying. I would take it off on a pro build for sure. Okay, I'll probably just take it off. I mean, you're going to be like comp stancing, you know, watching it. Your face is going to be right there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it won't be as bad as my revolver motors, but hey, I got a, a revolver. Annoying. I got a revolver in my uh, my class. I guess you'd say it's a class two rig. My my other rig, it's a yeah. I got the revolver in that, and yeah, it's kind of annoying. I mean, yeah, I have one in my moon buggy. It doesn't bother me, but you know, everybody's got something to say about it when they hear them. <laughs> well, it's just <laughs> somebody. It's somebody's a, got something to say. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's something. It's something you don't expect because everybody's got you know a standard brushless something, and they're not used to. Right. Yeah. Uh, Everybody stops at the running. trailhead, and all of a sudden. <laughs> yep. So, and then like I was talking to Scooter about it earlier, and I was like. You know, what should I do? And he goes, everybody I talk to says, take it off because you don't really need it. So he says, but all like the team castle guys say, keep it on. He goes, but I'm sure, you know, that's probably because they don't want to be like a team driver that tells you to not run it. And then something happens. But yeah, I'm trying. All I got left after that is assemble some wheels, which, oh, I guess, I don't know if, I, you know, according to Scooter, he said that all of our listeners are going to lose their minds. Um, I got those, uh, I, I don't know if, I know the term is anti foams, but I got the Robo Slug 3D printed um, tire foams for that rig. Those have been popping up out here in, in my local crawler group where we go to like comp and stuff i haven't like how are they is it weird <laughs> so well i haven't used the rig yet but like i've taken the i've taken them and i've kind of like you know you hold them you know like anything else and like like just squishing them and compacting them and like crunching them up like 
obviously they work different than a foam does, but it's interesting to see that they do flex and conform and move. So it's like, I, you could totally see how it side hills really well and it doesn't like have the tire flop over, but at the same time still allow enough squish so that way the tire will conform and bite whatever it's going over to still give you traction. But so squish is good on the flat part of it, like the tread surface, and then correct. it's got like really stiff sidewall then. Correct. Correct. It's sim it's try that. It's got kind of like the same kind of like I guess you'd say set up as like a dual stage foam, like, you know, something that's got like a, a um, what is it? It's a little stiffer around the bead area. Yeah. And then it's right. a soft, um, you know, the outside, but the other difference is I think even with a two stage foam, you can squish the, the open cell foam and it'll compact to where it hits a close cell and the close cell doesn't really compact where this will actually, the whole thing will compact down all the way down to the rim if you wanted to. Really? Um, well, yeah, because it's just 3d printed, like right. Reinforcement ribs and that's all that holds it up. So, um, the cool thing about, or at least, I don't know, I haven't really done too much research. I kind of just went off of some recommendations. So, I went with Robo Slug RC because uh, main point the price seemed to be right on, and it was something that like I've never, you know, I've never run these before, so I'm kind of like, all right, if I don't like them, do I really want to spend an arm and a leg to, you know, to try something new? So yeah, his price, point, yeah. his his uh his price points like spot on. I I want to say it was like. 40 bucks or 60 bucks, I think for a set of four, something like that. And he's got three different, um, he's got a soft, a medium and a firm. And he tells you like each one's recommended for this amount of weight of a rig. And you can actually also mix and match. So like, if you know you're building a certain rig and it's going to have a ton of metal in the back, or it's going to be you know, whatever you could put firm in the rear and go like a medium in the front, or if you, you know, vice versa, if you know, your front's going to be heavier than like you can tune them all, whichever way you want. Oh, huh. so, but yeah, I mean, uh, the quality of the print looks really good. Um, overall, like I'm, you know, I'm happy with them. How and tight are they on that ring? Um, the, I have not a ring. I have not put them on a rim yet. I hope that they that somebody is like making those just slightly small so that they won't shift back and forth on the inner ring. That'd be so nice because like that's but like you got all those rim options like spec and CNC where they have a little bit more meat in the middle. Yeah, Whereas like the Proline ones kind of have like a little belly, like a real wheel. You see, and I think that's the hard part because. So I'm running into that issue. I have the Proline dual stage foams on the yellow uh, blazer and those have those wider CNCs. Um, and they, sh even though that's got really good sidewall because it's the dual stage, because they're so narrow and that wheel's so wide, it still shifts back and forth a little bit. Right. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's hard. I mean, oh, yeah. like I said, I haven't put them on a on a wheel yet, but I think there's just too many options for somebody to come out with like the perfect, you know, setup. I, I was like just that. thinking since that stuff stretches somewhat that, you know, if you made it just a little bit smaller, it'd stretch to fit over most wheels and then not, yeah. you know, not shift side to side, hopefully. Yeah. But also it's, it is a more rubberized, you know, compound. So that's going to be more grippy, you know. I guess yeah, you'd say yeah. it's going to have more traction on a, you know, aluminum surface versus the foam's just going to, it's soft and it's going to slide. Right. So. But you'll get some dust in there and it won't be as tacky and it'll shift. Or that too. Maybe. Didn't even think about <laughs> that. So, yeah. The no, fine definitely. silk, you know, gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, surprisingly enough, Axial Fest should be the, it's like, maiden voyage testing once i get it completely put together i mean the rig's all like everything's built it's just assembling the last final part so did you like just kind of shit can your other comp build you were doing that had the desert lizards and stuff no 
I still have that one. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure That's if you were the... going to go a different direction with that since you had the pro now. No, I mean, that one also serves like kind of like two purposes. So that rig is a slight, I guess you can say, homage back to the first kit I ever owned. So that's got the axial Betty body, not to be confused with the B17 Betty body. Um, it got really confusing back in the day. Uh, so it's like kind of like that early Chevy's like 50 Chevy body style. Mm -hmm. Um, that was on, so my first kit ever, that was the body that it came with. And I kicked myself to this day for, I was, I ended up bedlining that body back in the day and I ran it for a while. And then I ended up just like, okay, I'm never going to use this thing again. And I ended up tossing it. Uh, I kicked myself for tossing it and I kicked myself for, uh, bedlining it. So this time when I got my hands on one, I'm like, I'm going to paint it like the rig on the box, which was the two tone green and light silver. And then, um, yeah, I just wanted it to be kind of like that rig, but more capable because back when that kit came out, you were still put, you were putting the battery between the rear shock hoops. Um, it was not really performance driven. So yeah. So that's pretty much what that rig turned into. And that's actually the rig that has my, um, revolver in it. Hmm. Gotcha. So, I mean, I'm even running cause that, that rig when it, or that truck kit, when you got it came with the pro line flat irons, like the original OG, I think they were like, oh. One point. I think I have a set. Four. I think I have a set. Hold on. Oh, I still have. I still have my original <laughs> sets. They were. They were. They were tiny. There's a size. Um, there's a dimension on there. I think so. I think it's like one four five or one three five or something like that. Yeah, they're real wide. Big lugs. Yeah, and uh, so I put the flat iron XLs on that rig just because that's you know more scale, or it's bigger and it's more. Um, it matches what was there as far as the same brand, um, and style, but definitely more performance driven. And then that's the other thing I decided to go with the, oh, what tires did I go with? You didn't find some old ripsaws, did you? Is that what they were called? Ripsaws? No, I have no. Um, but yeah, the rip saws, um, no, on that rig, I'm running the flat iron XLs. I'm talking about for my pro. I just got the, I get everyone's going to be blown away supposedly because they're not a scale tire. They're a performance tire. The trenchers. It's a good looking tire though. I've wanted to try it. I haven't gotten it yet. Trenchers. So, awesome. so I like yeah, how they look. Not... <laughs> Well, it's just funny because I'm I'm more of a scale guy, so I'm always looking for a scale tire. So I'm like, all right, what do I want? And then I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the um, with the Proline crawlers, just because I really like those tires. And then and then they were and then I was talking to my buddy, and he was like, dude, why don't you go with a comp tire? And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should. I've never gone with a comp style tire, so. Let's try it. So there's a couple first get luck with those things. Yeah, so it's a it's a couple first for me with this rig. And the trenchers up here at least on the rocks that we have, like even like somewhat wet and muddy conditions, like they work fantastic. It's, they've definitely been the best tire that I've used here, at least. Yeah, I need to get some. I've been doing more comp stuff out here, and I'm just struggling with my... I got some G8, uh, what is it, the mud terrains? And they, they do not do well. <laughs> Everybody else is like tusks. <laughs> And uh, a lot more performance tire. I and, still haven't and tried class that. one, class two. I'm like, oh, I can't keep up. 
I need to get some at some point to see what they're all about. I do have some landmines, but I never really run up. I had them on my deadbolt a while ago, axial fests, but the tusks are popular out here. Well, all right. I think we're, we're about an hour ten in, so or I think about an hour in of live. Um, do we have anything else we wanted to Is touch it? on, or you guys want to talk about Badlands at all? Yeah. Oh, when is? Give us the scoop. When is Badlands? Badlands just happened. Just, last week. just happened. Really? I completely missed it. <laughs> I was there. I was there. <laughs> oh. How was it? Oh, it was pretty cool. Um, it was completely different, and you know, than Axel Fest West. It's cool to be able to go to one and then the other, and kind of, you know, see the crowd and everything. Uh, I, I feel like there might have been a few more people here than there were at Rob's Resort, but I don't know. I don't know what the exact numbers were. Uh, it was just super cool just to see another, another group of of tiny truck lovers. You know, they run the gamut from you know some guy checking in to tech like thirty trucks. And, other people, this is their first time, so that was pretty cool. And just meeting all the people in between. Um, I had a guy come by who's from Japan, and his buddy couldn't make it to the event, so he sent him with his car. It was like Dragon Slayer looking. Um, it was a Yeti based truck, so it was super cool to see that all brazed up, five millimeter tubing. And it was cool. I took some pictures of it, I posted it up on my uh, Instagram page. That was cool. And day one, as soon as I set up the tent, this kid comes over. He must have been like 17, maybe. I don't I don't think he was 18 yet. He, he was barely driving, you know, real real cars. And he pulls up with the I-beam truck. I was like, that's awesome. You did it. You used all the stuff. Good job. You know, that was super cool to see, you know, like young people, young kids coming like, hey, check out what I made. Like, this is exactly why I offer what I offer and make the videos and I do what I do. It's just to, to get new people into it. And it's cool when you see, like, just young people, too. That's just right. going to keep the hobby going. Um, so that was super cool. Um, I got to hang out with Canyon Coolers and Lee from RC Car Action. They were on either side of me. Hanging out with John from, from Canyon. That was cool. Hanging out with the 11 Charlie guys. Um, I gave them a bunch of stuff. We were supposed to share a campsite, but they had a lot more people. So they ended up going to the other side of the road there. But it was cool. Always nice to see Javier and meet some of the new vets. Uh, had some chicken of the woods. One of the dudes was just like <laughs> camp chef the whole time. He's like, hey, you, you, you eat mushrooms? I'm like, no, 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 man. I don't, I don't eat mushrooms. He's like, no, 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 not weird mushrooms. This is the food mushroom. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. So, that was kind of cool. <laughs> you said chicken of the, the woods, and immediately time. I thought you were gonna get served some squirrel. Like I was, yeah, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and he showed me this big giant mushroom thing. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll try that. It's pretty good. But that was cool. And I actually, um, I helped Chris from Scale Ultra. I guess they approached him to do an event out at Badlands, and he can't make it. Um, he's in Utah. He's on the other side of the Rockies. And I've offered to help him with stuff before. Um, I've done a few of them. And he asked me if I wanted to host it. So I did that. We did that Friday morning. That was a ton of fun. I'd never done it. I did not expect as many people as we got. We had kids as young as nine and old men up to 59. So there's a 50 year, you know, age span of people running around chasing their trucks at seven in the morning. That was super cool. Um, just to be able to set it up and like organize it. And I, I think I did it. Okay. I don't know. Uh, having 30 people getting them organized and setting up the course. I, I, you know, I come from your guys' side of the, the world, the West Coast. I've been to King of the Hammers and stuff. I'm like, all right. So I'm looking for these lines. I'm like, all right, this is going to be kind of exciting. You started off into like a little uh, boulder climb, and then there's some sketchy side hill in and like slick rock. It was cool where they put us. I was worried it was just going to be like forest trails. But yeah. uh, in the middle of this park, there's a quarry, and there's just all kinds of cool. It was perfect for the scale ultra, in, in my opinion. It was very, you know. King of the Hammers inspired. <laughs> of course, there was, you know, the sand pit and stuff like, like Laser Nut Alley and all of my, I had this all in my head as I'm laying out the course. <laughs> so that was super cool. Had some good volunteers too. I met um, Joe from Joe's Ropes. Uh, he 
volunteered his whole crew of people out there. So had like one guy like doing the road, checking to see when the shuttle was coming to like flag him down to make sure nobody was going to get run over. And they helped me like set up and, and do the timing and stuff too. That was cool. So, oh, and I won some cool stuff in the prizes on the last night. I won some castle. I won uh, a castle Mamba Max motor combo and then an additional like 4,600 KV motor. I was like, huh, there you go. <laughs> That was kind of cool. Nice. But it was a super cool place, really different than what I've been to before with the West Coast Axial Fest. And then that, that's another weird thing. It's an off-road park, so you can bring your side-by-side -side or whatever. You can't, like, drive to the trail head. So there's a trail, like, right by the camp, kind of. It's, like, maybe a three quarters of a mile, half mile away. Um, and then where that quarry is, there's a shuttle that drops you off at the quarry and there's just a bunch of trails like eat or meet there. And that's where they had like the rock racing and the tough trucks and stuff like that. But you weren't allowed to drive your personal rigs back there. You could only take the shuttle back there. But if you had like a side by side or a, you know, a built truck, you could go cruise around the park if you wanted. Oh, nice. Uh, that sounds like it would be a good time. Yeah. I got to see the new low car or the new low motorcycle. That was kind of cool because I was right next to RC car action. So I kept seeing all the cool stuff that was going over there. <laughs> yeah. That, I think that thing is going to take off huge. I yeah. mean, especially with the amount of like part support they already have for it and different riding gear outfits that you can put on them. Like just crazy. I, I think those, especially for 600 bucks, like dude, they're going to sell so many of those things. If it works as good as it looks, I, I can see a lot of people getting kicked out of BMX tracks. Or actually, BMX tracks, they're no longer being used for BMX racing because that seems to have passed away. <laughs> but these look like they would be perfect on that setup. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think they might tear up like eight-scale buggy tracks and stuff. I don't know. I, I feel like they would tear that up, but it would be good on BMX. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the tires do as far as like track wear and stuff, if it would rut up or what would happen. It'd be kind of interesting. I was thinking about that the other day when I was at the off-road track, killing a little bit of time up north from me and looking at it, thinking about what the bike would be like on it and stuff. Well, I know Proline's got tires for it already. They got hole shots and then they have like, they have a slick tire too for... I don't know what is that supermoto. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yep. So yeah, it was a super cool event, and I kind of released my my newest uh, product, the Whoopa Cabra chassis. There, pretty much anybody that was like checking it out asked if they could pick it up. I just handed them the remote. I'm like, here you go. I had a little jump. I had like I think I have the same ramp that uh, the Jay has that you use for your monster truck stuff oh yeah i saw you post them one time and i'm like where did you get those and you, you told me and i got them so i took those out there and i had them just in front of the booth so anybody that had a car that went fast was just jumping in front of my booth <laughs> so it was a little extra dust but it was cool hopefully people would like that but yeah That's a good idea that was kind of cool just to see everybody's you know reaction to this car it was all the same just a big smile <laughs> 5700 kv is a little much for a crawler <laughs> <laughs> Or just right, depending on who you are. <laughs> or just right. Yeah, it drives like a drift car. I'm like, exactly. Yes. <laughs> We're sitting on top of like a gravel pit here. So, yes. Just slides and jumps. Well... Now we just got hit with that awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like super tired and haven't had dinner or anything, so I don't have a whole lot of energy today. I'm well, dragging okay. a little bit. Yeah, Wednesdays. We, we kind of hit the, the mark anyways. Yeah, we're about there. That's true. Yep. I'm down. Well, I guess we can take off then. All righty. Well, Andre, thank you. Yeah, Great thanks, having you dude. On again. I appreciate it. No, it's kind of last minute. I appreciate you being able. I know it's all good, man. Work for us. This this is the full time thing now. It's all RC all the time. Rob, I quit. That's I awesome. quit the day job before we moved out here. Good See, Indiana, okay, so that's kind of like an interesting part we can add to this real quickly before you go. So yeah, you're now a completely RC 
not funded, but RC is what um, pays the bills now. Like that's a hundred percent. Okay. Well, it makes nice. the debt. We'll, we'll say it makes the debt. I just did my taxes. <laughs> finally got them all finished. And it's like, yeah, RC makes the debt. Just like everybody else. Yeah. But I just do it all the time. <laughs> oh, yep. Right before the show, I was making some antennas. I was working on some new drawings for... I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures of the dash in the Wupacabra. I'm making like a little... Kind of like my sand ladders where you just fold them on the lines for my seats. Oh, cool. I'm to make a little like simple, kind of like a modular dash. You can put this in whatever you want and it'll give you a nice, cool looking uh um, That's a really machine good idea. looking dash. Nice. Yeah. No, that's a really good idea. Like that's always been kind of like my favorite things that you've come out with, like the bend and braze bumpers, because it's like anybody can do it. You just fold it up. You know, I mean, you don't have to braze it. So much over. time. Yep. If you've done it before, if you've cut the square bar up and chopped it and bent it and chopped it, it saves so much time. Yes. And it's the right gauge. It's the right scale. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, good deal. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, definitely. Well, All gentlemen. Right. Okay. Well, well thank, you, thank you for coming out on yeah, the show. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Happy to happy to answer the, the call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you everybody for listening once again and uh you know, sticking with us through you know the last couple of years. You know, we've been putting a lot of these out, you know, over the years, but we've slowed down. But it's awesome to see like the like listener count and everything still staying where it is. So I'm glad that you guys are just <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, just waiting for us. But yeah, at least you guys are still here, so we're very appreciative. Yeah, we'll and try it's also, and be better about it. It's also funny re- reading some of the messages. Like we've gotten a couple on our Facebook, um, that or Instagram. I can't can't remember because now it's like morphed together, so you, yeah. it's hard to distinguish the it's two. So confusing. Yeah, but somebody said somebody was like. Oh my God, I'm only on episode 40 and I love it. And I'm like, well, if you love it at episode 40, wait till you get to the good stuff. Well, you're not even there. You're, 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 still, you, you're still when we did all the ghetto episodes. Wait till you get to the good ones. Right. So, but anyways. All right. Well, well thank you, everybody. See you guys later. See you later. Bye.